So what we want to see is rise of sheath development on the roots. So that is the sand sticking to the roots. That is root hairs holding on to that soil. So the rise of sheath is that development. It's all them root hairs holding on to it and pulling nutrients off. So that's what we're looking for. And we can buzz down the hill to my check strip and we can dig up some plants side by side. And we did bust a few roots off of this I'm seeing that are snapped off. It's just hard trying to get them all. You can see there's yeah. roots here. There's little hairs all over the place that probably came off of this plant. Yeah. And this is sand. Like this is really sandy ground. We've had roughly two tenths, maybe three tenths of an inch of rain in the last 35 days. But the cover crop has just really protected the soil. I mean, look at that. We're not even an inch deep and we're hitting moisture on this. And that's underneath of this residue. And this is like beach sand. It's real sandy ground. But that's the power of our cover crop and the no-till, preserving our moisture versus, uh, you know, the heavy tillage and drying that soil out. And this field looks really good. We sprayed this field, like I said, with herbicide, uh, the least amount of herbicide we've ever used. Um, sprayed it, terminated it, came back 48 hours later, roller crimped it, planted right behind it. So it uh, turned out really good. Good planting conditions. It was a little bit damp planting into, but we had so much cover crop, it just hold, held the moisture in there. So yeah, it turned out really good. Um, we were in no hurry to plant this year. We waited until soil warmed up and the conditions were right. Uh, we did not get in any hurry to plant. And I think that definitely paid off. So it's not a huge, huge difference, but you can see the difference in root structure. That's untreated and that's treated. So and I tried pulling plants that are, you know, very similar in growth stage. Um, this is what, 20 foot apart. We noticed earlier in the spring, we had a lot of rise of sheath on these. Now, heavier ground, you're not going to see as much of this. Lighter soil, like we were just up on top of that knob up there, you'll see a lot more rise of sheath and stuck to it because that sand is particles just stick to it so much more. But the root biomass is what we're really after. I mean, the rise of sheath and root biomass is what we're after. But that's kind of a similar comparison on where we're at treated versus untreated. So this one is just uh, planted with nothing in furrow. Um, out the back of the planter, we had nitrogen, sulfur, humic, boron, zinc, and molasses. This one is the exact same program out the back of the planter, dribbled two by zero. But this one had in furrow compost extract, vermicompost extract. Um, we ran like I said, vermicompost extract, it was a combination of Johnson Sioux compost and uh, Fed and Happy vermicompost. And then we put um, yucca and fish hydrolysate with that. Um, and I think that was it. Yeah, yucca and fish hydrolysate with it in furrow with the compost extract. So... So yeah, that's the power of biology and furrow versus no biology and furrow. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when you look above ground and you look at my check strip, you cannot physically tell above ground that it had a treatment on it. But when you dig down in the ground, that's when you find it. And, um, you know, I was doing some reading and some listening yesterday. And what they said was a lot of times you'll see corn plants or bean plants that are just exploding above ground, huge big leaves. And what that is, is that's leaf biomass, but when you start digging underground, the roots have not been developed. They're just completely blowing up on commercial fertilizers. And what you really want is the below ground because it's not a race, it's a marathon. We gotta get all the way through the end of the season and a solid root structure and development will get you all the way through the season. So we're really dry right now, but I mean, as you can see, We've still got really good moisture on this ground that we just pulled up. And there's your worms, Kendrick. 
they're down there a little bit. They're just trying to find moisture because it's so dry. And you can see the, the worm casting and the slime on the soil there from where we just pulled the worms out of. Yeah. But, oh, there's another one right there. Oh, that's a baby one. Uh, that's a baby one. But, uh, yeah, and then we got some more roots right there that we, uh, you know, are just kind of trying to pull this through is, that. This is a big old one. I don't know how well the camera can see that, but if you... There's a lot of little bitty tiny root hairs on that root. And those are what are pulling in your nutrients and feeding that plant. You know, the more root hairs you can have, the better. You can have all these big roots, but they don't mean nothing if you don't have the little root hairs all over them and the branching out that you have here. That is the foundation to a successful plant. It's not always what looks good above ground, but what you're seeing underneath the ground. Because later in the season, this is really gonna pay off. So um, getting good root development, getting that biology functioning in furrow. So yeah, that's what we're after.